On August 7th, the grappling world will stand still. Two of the sport's most bitter rivals will finally settle the score at the biggest who's number one event of all time. It wouldn't be historic without the sport's most significant star, Gordon Ryan. Any of these pussies in the top five, top 10, whenever any of you want to compete, let me know. The brash, talented, and confident 27-year-old black belt has single-handedly transformed the sport. With 55 straight victories, an unmatched submission rate, and the title of who's number one heavyweight champion, Gord Ryan has earned his nickname, The King. Oh man, it's a bad day for the haters today. <laughs> There is the finish, Gordon Ryan with the submission. Even Gordon's most vocal detractors have all fallen silent. His greatness has become undeniable. Gordon has continued to pick off submission wins over veterans, contenders, and the new generation of phenoms. His list of challengers have grown quieter and quieter, all reluctant to come for the crown until now. Felipe Pena isn't afraid of anyone, especially not a competitor he's already defeated twice. A multiple time world champion in Jiu Jitsu, Pena is on his way to becoming one of the greatest champions Brazil has ever produced. Felipe has not only beaten Gordon, He's the only man to ever submit him in black belt competition. If Gordon has a kryptonite, it might be Felipe Pena. And before the career of this legendary grappler is over, he has his sights set on defeating the king one more time. On August 7th, two fierce adversaries will take to the mat, destined to cross paths once more. One is eager to avenge his past mistakes. The other relishes the opportunity to silence the biggest trash talker in the sport. When the dust settles in Dallas, Texas, one will walk away with victory. The other will suffer a devastating loss. One way or another, someone will tap out. And someone will carry the crown for years to come. This is true submission only. This is the best fighting the best. This is the road to who's number one. Gordon Ryan versus Felipe Pena three. Born and raised in Belo Horizonte, Brazil, Felipe Pena has stayed true to his roots, despite traveling the world and winning championships on multiple continents. Felipe has never left home. Lucky for him, some of the best jiu-jitsu training in the world is quite literally in his backyard. Just gonna do a wrestling practice with uh, Coach Luis. Do a lot of drills, of takedowns, contra attacks, uh, and some sparring dance. Since uh, ADCC 2017, I started training wrestling. The first year I didn't enjoy so much, <laughs> but uh, nowadays I enjoy training. I think it's very important you be complete, especially for no gi for ADCC. You know, you need to have a good takedown game. That's why he, he wants to do a no time limit match, you know, because the rule is better for him before he DCC. Felipe is preparing for another championship run at the ADCC World Championships. But first, he wants to close the book on Gordon Ryan once and for all. He's the guy who talks a lot of crap all the time, you know. That's take really personal and uh, makes me want to fight him. 
I think it's more important for me than even the ACC. I want uh, to face him before do MMA, you know, like that's my main goal. I was doing ADCC, of course, because it will be a huge uh, event and I want to be part of it. But uh, especially because I want to face Gordon, you know. If I beat him, uh, I shut up everyone, you know, before I go to MMA, it will be like the best, uh, the best thing to close a career, you know. A third fight between Felipe and Gordon has been a long time coming. So long, in fact, many had given up entirely on making it a reality. Since he won the open way, he didn't do any tough matches. Looks like he wants to just uh, enjoy the title, you know? He didn't want to lose. Any of these pussies in the top five, top ten, whenever any of you want to compete, let me know. The last uh, two, three years, like he always talk on the internet, oh, no one face me, no one signed the contract. He's like a kid. Oh, you never signed a contract. Man, what do you mean? I'm calling you here to fight. Send me a contract, let's do it. Oh, no, I am, uh, have a stomach problem. I think he just didn't want it. But I think as long as he, he, he keep lying on the internet, keep lying, 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 lying for the, the people, for the fans, and that's what I think is wrong. You know? He won't like enjoy the title, you know, do other things until it's the right time. It's his choice, you know. Gordon, my chubby baby, I am coming for you, okay? I have to accept your rules, your country, your time. Let's see what happens. Let's see. We're going to do what you're saying on the internet. From New Jersey to Puerto Rico, Gord has finally settled in the great state of Texas. Austin's amazing. Um, it's not as scenic and as beautiful as the island of Puerto Rico. But the people here are amazing. Everyone's very, very nice. It's easy to get things done. It's easy to do business. It's easy to, uh, to move around within, within Austin. So, uh, I mean, I, I love it. It's probably my, probably my favorite place overall that I've lived. So we have our filthy cars out in the front. We have the Ram TRX, which is like probably my favorite vehicle ever because it's fast and it's luxurious and it can do anything pretty much. The CTS-V, which is probably my all-time dream car. This is the car I wanted growing up through high school, so I got this from my dad and then now he died, so uh, it's mine. <laughs> um, but uh, this is something that I love and I'll, I'll never sell this. And then this MX-5 Miata uh, I had in Puerto Rico. I was actually trying to sell this in Puerto Rico. Um, didn't end up selling it before uh, my buddy Fernando moved here. He was trying to sell it for me, and I was like, oh, I'll just ship it here. So now uh, Nat drives this, and then I drive these two. And then the Corvette's getting worked on to it right now, so that's, that's out and away. Uh, this is my winter hat, because apparently you can't wear felt in the summer. It's too hot, so I don't want to get yelled at. So this is my winter black cowboy hat. This is my straw summer hat for when I go out. And then this is uh, Big Gord's old cowboy hat. And it actually got crushed. Our, our friend Jancy uh, helped us steam it to be presentable. Um, but uh, this is Big Gord's old hat, so I keep this up here as well. So this is a, a company called Dice Ideas. They, uh, they do faces of people, and they make the artwork in rolling dice. So I have a, uh, a portrait of Big Gord that's made, it's huge. It's like six foot tall by like three foot wide. This is pretty cool. Today is a historic day. Gordon Ryan is signing his contract, which will make the match with Felipe official. Felipe Pena, August 7th. Uh, no time limit, submission only. So uh, there won't be any refs involved. There'll be no judging bias. It'll be uh, just someone gets submitted and that's the end of the match. He's uh, making me jump through hoops as he always does, but he actually signed the contract this time. So. Um, I can confidently say this is the worst decision he's ever made in his entire life, so uh, it should be fun. It's been so difficult to get this third match with Felipe that it's one of the matches that I want most, but for like a year and a half, I just refused to even talk about it to any promoter because Felipe would just waste my time every time. He's always got an excuse, he's got something he's impossible to negotiate with, he wants a million dollars to do this, a million dollars to do that, time doesn't work, he stubbed his toe. Whatever excuse you can find, Penna's had it. 
he was trying to make me jump through hoops and go to Italy and do this and do that. And then finally Flo stepped up and like, can we just do the match? This frame before my first match against Gordon Ryan, I tried to Flo. They actually got him to agree to the match somehow. Maybe I, I, he must need money or something because somehow they got him to agree to no time limit submission only. Just waking up one morning and Gordon saying, Felipe sign. I was like, really? Like, I'd heard so many times before that I didn't even take it seriously. And I said, you really signed? And, and he said, yeah, it's on. Felipe's time to compete against me was two weeks after the last ADCC. Like, if this guy competes against me now, it's not going to be competitive. Most people look at it in terms of the social media image of like two guys that hate each other's fucking guts, one of whom has to prove something because he lost the other guy twice. And I think that's how most people will perceive the fight. In terms of jiu-jitsu drama, this match <laughs> will probably be the biggest, biggest match of all time. We have Gordon Ryan versus Felipe Pena. Uh, it's an hour-long match, Sean. Yeah. I mean, I never really watched high-level jiu-jitsu guys. I didn't know who Pena was until they offered him as an opponent to me. I think it probably started with Gordon, I think, calling Felipe out. Felipe was a world champion. Mo Jasm, he saw what I was doing and was like, yeah, I don't like this kid. I'm gonna pay someone to beat him. I was not gonna compete against Gordon. He was not like a huge name or something like that, you know? That's when he started calling me out on the internet. He said he was gonna tap me, you know, and the same trashed out as now. I was super confident going in. I was feeling great, and then up until the tournament, I got like the flu or something. I got super sick the week before the tournament. And nonetheless, I went out, I fought him. Gordon did very well at the start, but was physically overpowered. Felipe was quite a bit bigger and stronger in those days. I remember being super tired, just 100% exhausted. I was walking around like 185. By the time I showed up to the tournament, I was like 172 the day. I felt Pena was just so much stronger than me in the match. I was like, man, this is just terrible. He did a lot of inches on the heel hook. But as he started to fatigue, the Ashigarami control got looser and looser. And Felipe recognized that. Saw that the, the back was being exposed for longer than it should be. So I was able to, in one of these enters, uh, go for his back and close that triangle and we are make a choke. Finally, the last time he actually got to my back, the strangle stuck and he ended up submitting it. And everyone from my side was so happy, you know, because like, people get like really hyped because of the trash talk and people take it very personally, you know. I think it was a victory not only for me, but uh, for a lot of people, you know. No excuses for me. Uh, he was a better grappler today. Uh, all there is now is to uh, have to go back and watch him with tape and you know, hopefully come back stronger. Uh, but I know every, all the haters are going to be uh, you know, celebrating, which is fine. Um, everyone's going to hate no matter what, if you win or lose. Uh, so, you know, this is, uh, this is a good day for the haters. You, you learn something from every loss. I think it's a mistake for an athlete to dwell upon one loss. Because then you start to look at that person you lost to as something different, something, some, a bigger challenge than perhaps they really are. There was just a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of mistakes. There's a lot I took away from that match, um, both technically and tactically. I remember Gordon afterwards saying, like, man, Felipe felt like literally like three times stronger than me. And uh, uh, so then Gordon started working on his physicality. And that was six years ago, so it was just a completely different match than it would have been, you know, recently. The second he submitted me, I'm like, this is the, one of the only guys to submit me ever in competition. We have to eventually do that. There is no bigger competition in grappling than the ADCC World Championships. It is the premier proving ground for the world's most elite submission grapplers. In 2017, the global competition led to Helsinki, Finland for an unprecedented tournament. To the surprise of many, Gordon Ryan backed up all his trash talk and dominated the tournament's toughest division, taking out Dylan Danis, Shanjay Ribeiro, Homolol Bahal, and submitting Keenan Cornelius in the finals, proving to everyone he was here to take over. So that was my first ADCC ever. I won my division, the most stacked division ever in ADCC at 88 kilograms across any division ever. It was the best debut of any, any athlete ever in ADCC history. Felipe's biggest hurdle, of course, was Bouchesha. I watched that match with interest. I think that was 
probably one of Felipe Pino's best performances. I didn't think much about Gordon. I think much about uh, being an open weight champion at ABC always was my big dream, you know, since I'm young. So I said, man, one step, one, one more step, one more step. I was so motivated and uh, so confident that uh, when I start doing the open weight, you know, I said to him, man, I'm gonna win this. As the matches went by, uh, Gordon went through Cyborg and Craig and uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, and you could see they were inching closer and closer, and then it became kind of inevitable. So going into the absolute final, I was very confident. I had a great day, I felt great. I had a very high submission rate across the board going in. I was very excited to go into that match. This is a rematch yes. uh, from the battle at Studio 540 where Felipe Pena submitted Gordon Ryan. Will we see the same thing happening? At that stage, Gordon was still a weight division lighter than Felipe, but he said that when they fought, that he felt the physicality had evened out. They were, they were of comparable physical strengths now. It was a very strategic match. The first 10 minutes where it's like no points. Uh, I pretty much did guard, you know, they take me down and then did guard and got in a good position. I was doing good. I felt like I was controlling the pace relatively well throughout the match. And I thought Felipe did a very fine job with his guard retention, holding Gordon off, maintaining distance, excellent use of frames, excellent uh, use of getting his shoulders off the mat at critical periods when Gordon was getting close to a pass. The last two minutes uh, or so, um, I made a tactical, tactical mistake where I sat down and tried to attack his legs, and he ended up taking my back the same way they took my back the first time. Oh, oh, this is similar to yeah, the Studio yeah. 540. Exactly. This is exactly where Pena oh, took the back. Oh, he's going to pass. This is exactly it. Pena gets to the back. It was a similar situation where he attacked my foot and he opened space to go to the back. And then I closed the triangle and then I knew at the match that I was going you know. I think that might have been Gordon. <laughs> Gordon's hard hitting is trying to, to rectify the previous error and, uh, and having it compound upon itself. I'm pretty sure if I had more time, I would tap him again. Back on this day, I was just happy to win, you know. After that Penna match, I wasn't really too upset. I was disappointed because I lost to him, but I was very, uh, just ecstatic that I won ADCC. Um, had the debut that I had, and um, I was happy, but I wasn't satisfied. I knew that Felipe was a guy that I could beat, um, but I just made one tactical error, and that ended up costing me the match. I did feel at that point like I was starting to pull away from him in terms of technical knowledge. Afterwards, he said he felt no danger through the match. and You could see his confidence was rising. I got the impression Felipe was looking at him in a different way now. Like, this, this is no longer just some loudmouth American upstart. This guy's a serious opponent. Man, he never stopped trash talk, you know? Before the first match, trash talk, and then I, I win. And then we fought in DCC and I win and then keep trash talk, keep trash talk. I mean, you had my number five years ago. Five years is half of the total time that I've been doing jiu-jitsu. To think that matches from 2016 and 2017 with me specifically as an athlete um, will be the same, uh, it's, just, it's just silly to think that. You good? Let me say to Mike, I have a whole album of my phone off my son, you know? My, my... My chubby saw with the good arms. Oh my god. <laughs> I like this one. Okay, he likes this one. Can you see that on the camera? This he's got he's got a folder of hundreds of stuff like this of little baby Gordon memes. <laughs> I mean, Felipe at least tries to talk trash. It's just like arguing with the rock. Like he has like that chubby baby thing. I get like Gordo is like translates like fat and Portuguese and Spanish. It doesn't really add up because Felipe is like actually like chubby and out of shape right now. And I'm like shredded with an eight pack. It just doesn't make sense. You know when you have like a son, you make fun of a son and everything. That's how I feel about Gordo, you know. It's like a kid. I have a lot of uh, love for my, for my son. So I like to show love. 
since 2019, his stock has just gone down and down and down and down. He like had the Kasai match where he got heel hooked, and then he got, just got wrecked by Andre, thrown to a table, and then he won the world again, uh, got his title stripped, and now he's gonna retire from Nogi and go to MMA after he has to fight me, get beat up by me, and then lose ADCC. So 2022 is gonna be the only year for Felipe that was worse than 2019. He didn't want to fight for so many years. Why now, right before ADCC? I think I'm gonna beat him on both, but in his head, I think uh, he's only gonna accept if his, his rules, his way, his place, you know. I'm just completely different from 2016, 2017. I'm way bigger tactically. I'm on a completely different level technically. I mean, it's you may it may as well just be a different person at this point. He always say, oh, now I am way better. I'm strong, I'm gonna beat him. I think it doesn't matter how many times he, he lose, he always gonna say this. You know? I'm just objectively much better than Felipe. Every single position, there's just nowhere he can compete against me. He can't compete standing, he can't compete on the, on the, on the ground, top or bottom position. There's just nothing in the sport that Felipe is better than me at, besides losing. He has 2-0 right now, he should just kinda ride that for the rest of his career and say I'm the only guy to beat Gordon twice at Black Belt. He agreed to a match, I don't know what he's thinking. Face him 100%. I want to face the best, you know. Everyone is talking about Gordon. Felipe, he's got a proven track record against Gordon Ryan, so he'll go into this match with a lot of confidence. When it's a match like this, it's something that makes you train and do everything possible to win, you know. I would hate to <laughs> lose that match. The second he feels one of my grips on him, he's gonna be like, oh fuck, I shouldn't be here. I think this is going to be the toughest single match that Gordon Ryan has had in his career so far. Gordon's a very practical problem solver, and Felipe is a very difficult problem to solve. I already beat him two times. I beat him three times in a couple of years ago, and I'm still talking trash, you know. I'm not going to just go out there and finish him in five minutes. People are going to notice, okay, this guy's broken. And when he breaks, I'm going to be like, it's okay, buddy. Just 45 more minutes. I don't think he's gonna focus only on leg locks. He's gonna try to pass, sweep. It's gonna be me just flanking him, forcing him into half guard, passing him repeatedly. When I start to feel bad for him, I'll start coaching him, tell him what he has to do to stop me from doing the things I'm doing to him. Mentally, it's gonna be very traumatizing for him because of the fact that he can't get out of there until I let him out of there. You got two of the very best of all time. I think it's going to be one of the greatest matches in, in Jiu Jitsu history. On August 7th, all the talking ends. There will be no judges, no controversial calls, no points or advantages. Just two of the world's best grapplers and only one way to win. Guaranteed submission. One of these juggernauts will tap out. Will it be Gordon Ryan or Felipe Pena? Find out how it all goes down on the biggest night in Who's number one history, right here on Flow Graphics.